Oh, hi folks, welcome back to the uh, Jolly Old Workshop. Uh, this is part one, I'm afraid it's two parts at least, uh, for making the hydraulic drawbar for Sally the Sile here. So uh, let's get on with the titles and we'll see you on the other side. Right, here we go again. This is my quest for the cheapest possible way of making a power draw bar for a, for a, um, a milling machine. So um, uh, all my other systems and attempts have failed. The only one that was partially successful uh, worked but didn't actually have enough holding power. So um, <clears throat> this is where we are at the moment. This is the start, linear actuator. Um, 12 volts and capable of 6,000 newtons maximum load, which means that that can push 600 kilos. Yeah, 600 kilos. Um, now 600 kilos for 100 millimeters. Um, and it's very simple, you put 12 volts on there, it goes out, you turn it over, put 12 volts on it and it comes back in. It couldn't be simpler. Uh, so there's plenty of power in that. So moving on from that, next in the chain is this, a bottle jack. I need one and a half tons of force, so, so this is more than capable, the smallest bottle jack you can get. That is two tons, two metric tons, tonnies. Um, so we're going to use this in a different configuration. I know you hydraulic fans are going to tell me, oh, you've got that wrong. You can't put a push. What you're going to do is put that on there and push it up and down. Now, I completely agree with you. It's got the, the, the seal is the wrong way round. I'm going to try it like that. If it doesn't work uh, or I'm not getting sufficient force, then I'll re-engineer it and put the proper seals on it. Um, because it's, this is designed to be pushed this way and we're going to push it that way. So, um, yeah. That might not work. So we're going to butcher this. Um, let's, um, let's just have a quick measure. Right, so that's 22 millimetres. I don't know, hang on, what's that in Imperial? Uh, 0.869, 0.870 inch, um, or 22 millimetres in metric. Uh, oh, coming off that, we have uh, a quarter inch hose adapter, which I think I'm going to put into there. Take this off, put that into there. Hose going off there. Going to <coughs> another cylinder. Now, if you saw my video on where to get scrap metal, you'll have seen I've been skip ratting. And uh, this is 50 mil. or just shy is 1.97 uh, inches or 50 dead nuts on millimeter. A uh, piece of um, hydraulic ram and hydraulic cylinder. Um, so the small cylinder for the hydraulic uh, jack is 22 millimeters. So we find the surface area of that, which is pi r squared. Um, and we have the 50 millimeter, which we do pi r squared again. If you put, uh, we were after the ratio, the difference in, in size between that one and that one. So um, uh, you divide one by the other, so pi will disappear. So you end up with 25 square mil divided by 11 square mil uh, for the radiuses, uh, which comes out 625 over 121, or near as damn it, five times. So the hydraulic, uh, sorry, the linear actuator, this thing, can shift six thousand newtons or 600 kilos so we're effectively multiplying the force that, that generates by five so we're up to 3,000 kilos I need 1500 kilos so even if this uh, this is rated in Chinese newtons which yeah who knows um, we only need half the uh, available power that this thing can generate to release the tool um, I have done the calculations in terms of pressure, and uh, which is why I've got a proper hydraulic hose. We're talking significant load here. Um, 
I can't remember what I've done with a piece of paper, but we're we're up in the thousand psi range, which means uh, what I calculate about 170 bar or something, 170 atmospheres. Uh, I'll put it on screen. I can't remember exactly what it was. So um, we need a proper hydraulic hose. Uh, we need proper cylinders capable of of uh, dealing with the loads. Hence why I've got hydraulic cylinder cutoffs and I'm using proper connectors. Uh, no kidding, if this, um, if this goes wrong and, and the hydraulic fluid comes out and squirts at you, it will inject itself into your skin easily. So um, not to be tackled by the faint-hearted. So the first order of operations is to strip this down completely. Spring and I've uh, I need to leave that valve in because that's um, uh, that's the release valve that lets the oil from the piston cylinder into the annular ring, uh, so that's locked. Um, I've taken out the safety valve. I've taken out the um, uh, the piston valve, uh, but. You'll... Oh. There's still, there you go, there's still a valve in there, so uh, I've been looking and I think that looks like that's been welded at the end. Right then, so there are the two, um, one's a transfer port and the other one is a valve, I would think. Okay, after a bit of banging on a, on a vise, uh, the two plugs fell out. Uh, along within this chamber was a filter. Very simple little filter. Right, this is about as sketchy as I want to get. The, uh, <coughs> I've cut all round the back here and uh, I still can't get the base off. So I'm going to take this whole cylinder off. Right, I've changed to this um, diamond-shaped tool because I think it's a bit more rigid. So have another go. There we go. Hurrah! That's why I couldn't get it apart. It was welded at the bottom as well. Here's why I was never going to get the, uh, uh, the ball valves out, because they were welded in, the check valves I should say, they were welded into the bottom of this um, cylinder. Look at that. And there it is, complete with a little spring. Okay, into the bucket of broken dreams with that. Back over on the lathe. <laughs> I'm going to just... Um, tidy the end up so I can get the ram out. Okay, so now we should... I will uh, put it back in the lathe off camera. I'll just turn all this down to make it nice and round. Uh, or I better take the... Um, better take the seal out of this end. It's not what you call a Good quality. The uh, the finish in this cylinder is poor, to say the least. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And the finish on this um, this piston, this ram, is equally as poor. But uh, there you go. <coughs> I can't get the uh, the end off. I need to replace this. I think so. Um, uh, that's definitely a different part. <coughs> So 
So that's how they um, stop the uh, um, the screw coming out. They uh, fitted it inside the piston and then deformed the threads with a couple of um, couple of hammer blows. Right. So here we are. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put, put this in the lathe and see if I can take out some of these marks by um, just polishing it. And uh, I'm also going to polish the inside of this um, cylinder. They're really poor. But uh, a little polish probably help. Yeah, this is the drive piston and uh, it needs to be bored out to accept this uh, actual the, the piston, the drive, proper drive piston. I think I know what I'm talking about. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, so I've got the jolly old four jaw out, a piece of beer can, and uh, we will just put that in and line it up. This needs to be reasonably accurate, so um, there we go. That's close enough, I think. The, um, the camera crapped out. Uh, I ran out of um, storage space on the card. So uh, off camera, uh, I got this. Um, I didn't realise there was still the remains of, a, of the cast iron original piston in there. So uh, that then made my piston that I'd know, uh, the new piston that I turned up, too big. Sorry, too small. So uh, I've turned up an insert, pressed it in, and uh, we're just about to press in the piston. Uh, it's been thoroughly cleaned with isoprop and uh, just going to put some thread locker on it um, and uh, just push it home. Oh, it'll only be pulled. Oh, what's the word? Let's just get this in. Here we go. I think we're happy with that. My little furry friend never seems to be far away. Just talking to cats, have you ever noticed that they're never far from you when they want food or a, a, a warm lap to sit on and they're always, always the wrong side of a door. Right, I've um, given it a bit of a clean, uh, given the O-rings a clean, so uh, I'll just put those on. Oh. Teddy the tumble dryer has just started next door. Right, a little bit of oil. When I say a little bit, I'm rationing. Oh, there we go. Now that um, cylinder needs um, a bottom and a top. So, uh, there we go. To start with, because I'm lazy, I'll start with a piece on the top. Just needs to be bored out big enough to clear this uh, to sit on the top of that. Back on the old um, three jaw. I should really have put the um, reverse jaws in here, but uh, uh, if I catch myself, I'll be the first that knows about it. So, right, we're going to face this off again. Then we're going to bore it out 25 mil to take this. Uh, so this um, uh, this piston uh, and rod can go straight through. Then we're going to bore it out so that this um, this is a shoulder a shoulder to take this so that basically the this cylinder will be trapped in, inside here um, but the piston can move up and down. Incidentally I um, picked this up at a model engineer show I think. Um, or a steam show uh, is 49.64s, whatever the hell that means in real money, and um, it's clearly a few years old, but um, you can sharpen them, as we all know. 
So, uh, yeah, not a bad find. Right, so here we go, first pass. I bored that out to 25 mil, one inch. Now I will sink the end of this uh, cylinder into there by about 10 millimeters or so. It doesn't have to be a particularly good fit, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, so I'll just bore that out. That is, again, this is a nominal diameter, but it doesn't really matter. It's 31.6. Really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I just wanted to, when I um, machined the, uh, the weld away from the top of this cylinder, that is what I got left with. So um, uh, all we need to do is just retain this, this cylinder and some rods will pull the, pull the whole stack together once it's got a bottom on it as well. Okay, that uh, should be a nice snug fit. I've done a little bit of um, deburring, so let's, um, let's just try this in. Oh, spot on. Do you know, this is uh, pretty sketchy. One chuck holding another chuck, and then the work. I mean, it's uh, destined to go wrong, isn't it? I do have um, uh, another piece of uh, cast. I do have. I do have another piece of cast iron, which uh, I should really turn myself up uh, another arbor back plate for that chuck, so that I can put it straight on the nose of the of the lathe, because I use this quite a lot. Anyway, that's for another day. Right, um, off camera, I've just uh, taken this down a little bit. Um, that's the boss that the cylinder fits on. Trouble with focus here today. Eh? Uh, that's the cylinder that's going to fit on that boss. And uh, yeah, so I just need to reduce that down. I had to go uh, machine this and go for a walk because it was so hot you couldn't hold it. And I've generated a little bit of swarf to say the least. There you go, and it's everywhere on the jolly old floor. It even, I've cleaned it up now, but it even gets as far as over over here, which uh, that's a good, what we got there, that's a good sort of 10 feet. So uh, yeah, this jolly old lathe can certainly chuck chips around. Okay, I'll uh, clear up and we'll join you back here in a sec. What do model engineers generally make? Swarf. Okay, that's a bit tidier. Right, so next up is to turn this down. That's uh, 26 mil at the moment, roughly. Uh, to turn that down to an accurate 25, no, 24 mil, and fit a couple of O-rings so that um, we can plug up the bottom of this cylinder. I think I might make it a bit shorter as well. Right then, we're there with that. That's a nice slidey fit. Next up is to put a couple of O-ring grooves in here with a, a reasonable amount of pinch inside that cylinder. So uh, I'll just put them in. There we go. Um, all faced off and oh, finished. Uh, two uh, O-ring grooves. Uh, all that remains is to drill a hole uh, about yo deep, yo deep, um, for the oil transfer port. So uh, let me do that. I'll do that off camera. It's just drilling a hole. Right. I thought we'd uh, catch up at the at the bench here. This is where we are. That's the part I've just uh, made. Um, two O-rings go on there. Uh, there's two O-rings on the piston. Yes, I know the piston should really be made of cast iron. Don't have any in stock, so um, brass it is. 
Um, so the that hole is on the side here. We're going to fit a uh, a quarter hydraulic nipple, and uh, the hole in that is 4.6, 4.6 and a bit. So I've drilled this out at the same. So um, that's clearly a, a standard. So yeah, we'll go with that. I have uh, strap clamped the rotary table down because I can't be bothered to work out the coordinates uh, for drilling my holes in a 40 mil hole pattern. Um, so uh, uh, also, I didn't realize, but the fiducial mark on this is round the back. So I've drawn a little um, red line there, although I'm using the, um, uh, the actual display to work it out, running it manually with that. Uh, spindle on. That's at 2300. Uh, select X. And uh, we'll just spot that very slightly. I'll zero that there so that we know where we are. Go around to the fourth axis and go around. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, back on Z, there you go. I'll take those a bit deeper, then I'll repeat the process with, um, uh, with the base, and uh, then I'll just knock the holes through on the drill press, because uh, I'm not too confident that I'm going to hit the um, vice jaws here, sorry the chuck jaws, so uh, I'll just spot them. I've drilled the holes through and tapped them M6, so now we're ready to fit the, oh, this thing, the uh, hydraulic uh, nipple, that's the right word, uh, but I want to get it so that it's um, square and in the centre between those two holes. So uh, this is my ruse for doing it. Oh, put the nipple over there. Right, uh, the bed, zero. Two screws in the hole. Parallel. And we just have to arrange this until we get it to zero. I've um, put my fly cutter in because I want a nice flat surface uh, to fit my nipple to so that it um, seals well. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, I've moved 15 millimeters this, uh, this way, which has put the spindle right in the middle of this material. Uh, that's 30 mil thick. So we've gone 15, half the distance. We know we're on the centre this way, so now we are absolutely bang over the centre of this, uh, um, uh, this piece, this way and this way. So uh, I've just done the calculations. I need to take 8.5 millimetres off to give me a nice big enough flat. So let me get on with that. Okay, uh, I decided to go down four mil in the end because um, there's, hang on, I'll show you. Oh, there's more than sufficient space to get my uh, nipple on. So uh, we're back now with a centre drill and we're right over the centre of this land. So uh, I'll centre drill it, then I'll drill through to that, um, uh, to intersect with this hole uh, with, what was it, 5.7, 5.6, 5.7 I think it was, um, and then I'll need to open this hole out to 11.6, which is the tapping drill for that nipple. There we go. Let's um, see if this is going to fit. Oh, that's promising. Oh. I think I probably need to run the tap through a couple of more, couple more times. 
Okay, so here we are. Here are the parts for the cylinder, the drive cylinder. So um, I'm just going to um, do a, a quick assembly job on it because um, it's. I need to put it together to do some testing. So um, uh, I'm using standard old-fashioned motor oil, mainly because that's what I have. There you go, so that cylinder goes over the top of those. Come on boy, gently, gently, gently. Oh, that's snug. 92 and all the way in is 18 that gives me 74 millimeters of travel that's more than enough so <clears throat> yeah now I need to finish assembling this now we know that that's 74 mil I'll make a note of that 74 millimeters because we're going to butcher this drive um, linear actuator so that instead of having a 100 mil stroke it's got a 70 mil stroke or even a 60 mil stroke as close as I can get to 74 but underneath. Yeah. And finally now I'll just I'm not going to put this in with any particular um, not going to do it up too much, but that is the oh, hydraulic hose adapter. So uh, there we go. Hey, right, okay. So uh, what we'll do is we'll take the actuator rod off. Just a piece of thick walled aluminium tubing. Take that screw out. Oh, pull that to one side. I've already loosened off these two M4 looking like M4, yeah, M4 um, cap heads. So now this, there we go. Right, there's the guts. Uh, simple aluminium extrusion, put that to one side. <clears throat> this is the key to it. In here, I'll give you a close up of this, the motor drives the uh, screw and it basically threads this up and down uh, and it's stopped with a micro switch at the top and a micro switch at the bottom. So what we have to do is take this micro switch off and move it down till we get to under 74 millimeters of travel and then we've cracked it. There we go. Free. So uh, I brought you down for a low angle so you can see this. Um, should just be a simple case of re gluing it in. There we go, so that's what we've got. I will now just reassemble it and, uh, and test it. I will just check that's the right place for that wire though. After what can only be described as a lot of messing around, this is where we are. So if I just reverse the connections, there we go. Should go all the way in. Okay, so if I just make a mark, let's go over here. That one, now reverse the connections again. There we go, 65 millimetres of travel now. Perfect. Next up is to connect these two together 
and build some sort of frame to support them. Come on, come on, yeah I know, come on, there you go, you know you want to fuss, there we go, let the people see you, there you are, oh sounds like it's playing out there doing some aerobatics. Thanks for watching, um, it's a bit of an epic I do know, uh, in fact uh, the next one is going to be a bit of an epic as well, uh, but a, I feel it's probably worth doing because there's a lot of detail uh, to get out as to how I went about building it and you know if you think it's worth it or not, if you want to have a go yourself then yeah, there's a template to follow. Anyway thanks for watching, uh, do hit the bell and subscribe um, button and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, look after yourselves. <laughs>